Welcome to the next lecture on research methods and we have been discussing what kind of tools and methods we need to do efficiently our research and in this uh, lecture we will be focusing on the, the software, the statistical analytical software that we will be using and it's called R and um, it's one of the key tools that we'll be using. So um, basically the, the purpose for this lecture uh, will be the introduction to R, how do we first inst um, obtain it, where, where can it be found. Um, um, and then first I will first explain why I would like to use R and, um, and as I explained in my previous lectures that um, it's a freeware and uh, that is that you can actually download it and install it for free and um, the other key considerations are that uh, it's very powerful. Now when I say it's very powerful you can compare it against other um, options that we have, other alternatives namely SPSS and SAS and Stata and, uh, and LIMDEP and, and the like, it's equally powerful as many other empirical computing uh, platforms. It certainly is far beyond the, it's miles ahead of a competition like SPSN, SPSS and Microsoft Excel um, and it competes very, very toe-to-toe -to -toe with, uh, with uh, other advanced computing environments such as MATLAB. Now R is not just merely a statistical uh, software where you can point and click, but it's also uh, it's, it's a calculator, it's, it's, it's a computing environment, it's a programming environment, it's a higher level language and, um, and the power, but when, I, when we say it's powerful, it's actually capable of uh, doing not only the running the al algorithms that already exist uh, that someone else has coded, but also um, uh, you can create your own algorithms uh, for solutions that do not exist. Uh, for the problems that you are interested in solving. Um, also the documentation, uh, um, that is the how do you run it, what kind of anal anal analysis you can do with it. There's extensive documentation regarding its capabilities available for free um, from the internet and from, uh, from uh, uh, dedicated websites to R. It's current and now when I say it's current, it's, uh, it's being updated um, daily. There are a few thousand researchers around the globe who are developing R. These are academics and students and professionals who actually are busy coding new algorithms, improving existing algorithms so that it, its capacities are enhanced. And they're making all that intellectual property uh, available for free so that people around the world could, be, could have access to a quality analytical tool but for free so that if those who cannot afford it should still be, have a good um, chance um, uh, an affordable or in, in this case a completely free tool uh, to do research. And the last and most important point is that R is getting easier to learn and what I mean by easier to learn is that if you are an, uh, a beginner, um, an undergraduate student or someone who is a professional but has not really worked in the, um, in the, an, in the analytical environments or have not programmed, uh, you would rather pr prefer the point and click environment that you just click on on, on menus on, on, on in your software, um, select the variables and you get your results, the point and click environment. And R has finally made that transition that from being um, uh, uh, a command generated uh, or command oriented language, it has now a visual uh, graphic actually, it has a graphic interface, a GUI which is called graphical user interface which was developed by a professor at McMaster University. Graphical user interface is called R Commander and um, it runs uh, in, in the Windows and also in the Linux and the, uh, in the Macintosh, uh, Apple Macintosh environment. And the, not only that it has, uh, it's on its own is user friendly, the R Commander is on its own very user friendly, but other researchers have made it even further effort and have integrated R into Microsoft Excel. And um, there's a very interesting book that uh, just came out this year uh, from Springer and it's called um, uh, R through Excel, where researchers have actually coded and created a, a new add-in for Microsoft Excel where you can run R uh, without actually leaving Microsoft Excel's environment. So if you are familiar with uh, using Microsoft Excel um, uh, and, and you know how your way around the software, uh, you can actually bring in the, R, uh, the capabilities uh, coded or embedded in, in R uh, directly into Microsoft Excel. Lastly, there's another add-in in R which is called Zlig and the, the advantage of Zlig is because R is being developed by a few thousand researchers across the globe, um, there are certain uh, peculiarities for, for, 
for the algorithm. So different uh, researchers code algorithms differently. And what Zelig is trying to do is to create a unified syntax for the solve, for the commands to run so that once you are familiar with the one type of command, one type of algorithm that you would like to run, um, the syntax would be the same for other, other, other commands as well. To give you an example, for instance, if you are running a simple regression model uh, versus running a discrete choice uh, logic type model, um, the syntaxes are, syntax, syntax are different for the two, but if you were to, to approach this problem using Zelig, um, then you would have almost a very similar looking syntax where you define uh, the data set, the dependent variable, and set of explanatory variables and other controls, and you will run the model from there. Now, R was not that popular of a tool in, in, in recently, as of late, but in, in the last, I would say, two to five years, R has made significant uh, headway in becoming popular. Now, on, on your screen, you would see um, a clip from uh, New York Times, um, and um, it was uh, an article written in New York Times about R, because it has become um, popular, um, in not only in academia, where most professors are writing codes, but also in the, in the practitioner's world, uh, a lot of finance houses, brokerage houses, uh, houses um, in, in the U.S. where they do a lot of research on, on, on finance, have adopted R as, as a primary uh, research tool or a, a, a tool to analyze data. And um, and these are good developments, uh, and, and build it add on to the credibility of R when you know that it's not only being used in academia but also it's being used in the in the, in the by practitioners in the real world. Um, if you were to focus on your screens, um, you would see this slide where the R um, generic R console environment is presented. Now you see that this is, as I mentioned, it's it, well, it used to be a uh, a command-driven uh, environment where you would type your commands um, on on the screen and then you will get your uh, output. But with um, with R through Excel and, and R Commander, uh, a new point-and-click environment has been created. So if you were to focus here, and if you follow my cursor, this is how R Commander looks like. And I've just taken a, um, a slice of these my screen. Uh, where I ran our commander, and I'll be showing it to you in a, in a, in a, in a little while. Um, th so you have a tip, very user-friendly um, um, environment, and the, the menus look very similar to any software that you have used in the past. So this is how our commander looks like. Now, the, some researchers have actually gone a step further and, and embedded our commander and R into Excel. So if this is Microsoft Excel. Um, the R Commander is now embedded, and under Add-ins, you would see the R Excel. You click here, and you get the the same menu here, which you see in R Commander file, added data, statistics, and graphs and models and whatnot into R uh, into Excel. And if you click here, um, and this these are just stills, not live pictures, you can actually get the the functionality of R embedded into Microsoft Excel. 